Earl Johnson, D A R A. Good morning, everyone. The 14B District Court is now in session. My name is Elaine Washington, and I will be presiding. The court will call the case of Ypsilanti Township versus Ratiba Farhar, case number 21T00339 OM. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Good morning, Your Honor. Walter White on behalf of Ms. Farha, who I've seen signed in for a minute. Good morning, Ms. Farha. How are you? Good morning, Your Honor. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. All right. Your Honor, at this time, I'd filed an appearance in this case before we had a case number or anything else. And I think that uh, probably because I sent the appearance and the discovery demand to the state rather than the township. I haven't gotten any discovery from Mr. Barnett yet, so I'm wondering if I could adjourn it for two weeks uh, to get some discovery from Mr. Barnett. All right. No objection to that, Your Honor. August 4th. All right. I'll, I'll adjourn this pretrial to August 4th. All right. Let me. That, that would be great. Thank you. Your Honor, um, before we leave this case, I wonder if Mr. White and I could uh, approach in a breakout room with Your Honor. All right. It will be August 4th, 2021 at 9 a.m. We will approach, though, before the case is um, concluded. So please Thank remain you. on the line, Ms. Farhar. We're going to go into a separate breakout room. Today? Yes, you remain on the line. I'm going into a breakout room with the attorney. So please stay here, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome.
Did you change the video chat? No. Enter text message. The hoop my watching on the phone said something. Did you have to from the on the phone? What is it, Hima? I've never given it to you. I don't know. I've never given it to you. Oh, look, that's the course that is still recording. The lawyer is talking to the prosecutor. All right, we're back on the record in the. All right, we're back on the record in the case of Ypsilanti Township versus Ratiba Fahar. Uh, Ms. Farhar? Yes. Um, so I just want to make very clear what your bond conditions are and add, there's going to be some added conditions just so that we can make sure that this case proceeds in the manner in which it's supposed to proceed. Okay, ma'am? Okay. You already know there is no unwanted contact with more Kashan is the way that is worded at this time. So I, un I understand that and I've changed my number and I've moved from the residence and he still tries to contact me. In addition to that, you can't have any third party contact. So nobody else can contact him on your behalf, nor can they contact the witness, Ms. Marissa Noor Kasham on your behalf. Do you understand that, ma'am? Yes. All right. Any violation of that is a violation of your bond and they could subject you to having um, to go to jail. Do you understand that? I understand that, but can that be put both ways? Because they have come to my job. Well, the problem is that you're the person who is the defendant in this case. I don't have the ability to have uh, control over them. We have talked about that and we've asked the, the prosecutor to talk to them about making sure that they are not following you or coming to your job as well, but I don't, I can't order them. I can only ask them to not do that. Okay. Okay. And uh, okay. Just, just so Ms. Farhan knows, I did provide Mr. Uh, Barnett with a photograph of the uh, of Noor's truck parked outside Ms. Farhat's work. And Thank also, fi finally, I, I do need to get a copy of the police report with Mr. Burke and contact me about that. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. We'll see you back here on August 4th, 2021 at 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Ypsilanti Township versus Stephen Spencer, 21W001351OM. Paul Burnett on behalf of the township. Good morning, Your Honor. Andrew Bannis with it on behalf of Mr. Spencer. Good morning, Mr. Spencer. How are you, sir? Good morning, Judge. All right. We're here today for a pretrial. <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. Mr. Spencer uh, is requesting a jury trial and a final settlement conference date. But also, I will note that I do need to also follow up with Mr. Barnett uh, about this case. So possibly we could resolve it. But I see then... the parties in a breakout room. Sure. Thank you.
don't think I knew he gave me a court date for our discovery and you know our copies of everything. All right, we're back on the record in the Stephen Spencer matter. The court is going to adjourn this matter to August 4th, 2021 to give the parties an opportunity to get the actual police report in this case so that we can have some better understanding of what's going on in this matter. So we'll put this over to August 4th, 2021 at 9 a.m. Bond is continued. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll follow up with you, Mr. Spencer, after court. We're going to try to get some additional information, okay? I, I didn't know I was on bond. You're on bond. This is a um, this is a personal recognizance bond. That's a okay. Bond. So that that is considered. I, was bond. I got the ticket. We started. I was never told about a bond. So I just when you said bond, it kind of threw me off for a second. Well, it looks like you got arraigned on June 29th before the magistrate. Yeah. Then he set that bond at personal recognizance. Oh, okay. Okay. So you that's, that's very typical, Mr. Spencer, in these types of cases. It means you just promised to come back to court. All right, no problem. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll see you then on August 4th, 2021 at 9 a.m. Thank yes, you. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. You too. Ypsilanti Township versus Larry Burdick, case number 21T00079. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Good morning, Your Honor. Alice Friedman on behalf of Larry Burdick. He's present. Good morning, Mr. Friedman. Good morning, Mr. Burdick. How are you, sir? Larry, you need to unmute. Good morning, sir. All right, we're here for a pre-trial again. Yes, we uh, adjourned it previously for an opportunity for uh, Mr. Burdick to be evaluated and, and uh, get some recommendations. Uh, I have forwarded the evaluation and recommendation to Mr. Barnett. Uh, it's, uh, it's a positive uh, eval and rec. Uh, would uh, require Mr. Burdick to 
do some uh, some work, some classes, and some uh, programs. But it's a uh, it's a it appears appropriate to me, and he's willing to do so. And Mr. Barnett, I believe, has a, has an offer. I do, Your Honor. The people would add account two of operating while impaired, uh, MCL 257.6253-A. That is a 93-day and or $300 offense in exchange for a plea of guilty to that added count two. The people dismiss the original count one. That would be my understanding, and I believe that to be in my client's best interest. All right. And he's pleading guilty. He's pleading guilty to the added uh, reduced charge of impaired driving. Gotcha. All right, Mr. Burdick, would you please raise your right hand? Mr. Burdick, could you hear me, sir? Yeah. Will you please raise your right hand? Oh, I can't see it. All right. Do you swear firm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so you've heard the offer that was placed on our record today, where if you were to plead to an added count two of operating while visibly impaired, which is a misdemeanor carrying a maximum of 93 days, a $300 fine plus court costs, then the more serious offense count one would be dismissed. Did you hear that, sir? Yes. Yeah. Is that what you wish to do? Yeah. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go over some rights that you're going to be giving up by entering into this plea. I know that uh, you saw the magistrate in this matter. And trying to find the advice of rights. So Freeman, it does not look like your client has signed an advice of rights. We're going to need uh, him to do so. We'll send one in. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to go over the rights that you're going to be giving up here this morning by entering into this plea so that we can make sure you have a full uh, understanding of the rights you're giving up. You understand that, sir? Yeah. You have the right to have a trial by a jury and to have the assistance of an attorney. You also have the right to call witnesses to speak for you at that trial, and you can get an order signed by the court to require that they come to court. You have the right to see, hear, and question all witnesses against you at trial, and to be a witness for yourself or to remain silent. If you chose to remain silent, then the prosecutor could not comment on that. You also have the right to be pres uh, pr to be uh, proved presumed innocent unless proven guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Do you understand all those rights, sir? Yeah. You understand you'll be giving up all those rights today by entering into this plea with the exception of your attorney you'll keep your attorney th through the sentencing phase yeah in addition to that if you're on probation or parole at this time um, and you enter into this guilty plea it can be considered a violation of those uh, probations or paroles do you understand that yeah mm -hmm. um are there any immigration consequences that we need to be concerned about no, no. He's uh, he's lived in Ypsilanti in Ypsilanti Township all his life, and they're not going to deport him over this. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> I'll send him to Ann Arbor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in addition to that, sir, um, there is no automatic right to appeal this matter. Do you understand that? Yes. Thank you. I'm going to turn to the date of offense. On February 12th of 2020, were you in the vicinity of Ford Boulevard and East Forest Avenue in Ypsilanti Township, sir? Yeah. Were you driving? Yes. Yeah. And had you been drinking prior to driving, sir? Yes. Yeah. All right, thank you. Was there an accident in this case? Yeah. All right. And what was your blood alcohol content at the time? Do you I'm know? Not sure. 0.16. 0.16. All right, thank you. Um, I believe that there's a factual basis for the plea and that it has been willingly and knowingly made. Mr. Barnett? The people are satisfied, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Friedman? I'm satisfied. I believe the plea, plea was taken properly. Thank you. All right. Sentencing in this matter, five weeks. 
August 25th, 2021 at 10 a.m., sir. That's 10 a.m., Larry, so. Nine, nine. In the meantime, sir, you need to con contact the probation department and make and keep an appointment to have an assessment done. Okay, Mr. Burdick? He's had, he's had an assessment done. Oh, yes, he has had that. So we don't need that one. We can use it. Are you going to send it over to the court, Mr. Friedman? Yes. All right, thank you. Um, it's a thorough assessment. It's not a one-pager. Gotcha. All right, thank you. All right, send that over to uh, the probation department. And we'll he needs to contact the probation department so that they can interview him if they so choose to do so. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Do you need the phone number? No, we'll, we'll, we'll get it for him. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. See you on the 25th at 10. I don't think I'll see you later today. I think I'm, I, I think I'm township or being uh, landlord tenant free today. Oh, okay. <laughs> good for you. Day. It's not one of the worst days, but it's not a good day either. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'll see you the next time. See you next time. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Ypsilanti Township versus uh, Damon Horton, 20T00612. Bob Burnett on behalf of the Andrew Bannis on behalf of Mr. Horton, who I believe is present. Mr. Horton, can you state your name for the court, please? Damon Horton. Hello, Mr. Horton. How are you, sir? I'm all right. You're all right. Have you had an opp go opportunity to go over the pre sentence investigation report with your client, um, Mr. Bannis, day and stand time to discover the sentencing? I have, Your Honor. Uh, I did review the uh, report from Mr. Heaton uh, with my client. We have no requested changes to the report. As to the recommendation, um, we are asking, Mr. Horton is asking that you follow it. Uh, it is uh, a 12 month probation with 91 days suspended and, and several other conditions that I, I've explained to him are um, very standard in these types of cases. Um, one moment, Your Honor. He is not on probation or parole. He has a good new job at Helix Steel, Your Honor. Um, he does live in um, the Grand Rapids area and so he did have some concerns, or, or not concerns, some questions about how often he'd have to come to Washtenaw. And I explained to him that uh, those are issues that we would he'd probably be able to work out with the probation agent if you sentence him as recommended. For example, um, the testing. Um, perhaps there's uh, some place in Kent County he could test that would satisfy the probation department. Um, and then there is a requirement to complete a substance abuse assessment at community corrections. Um, I believe that there, there was an assessment by Von Schwartz. And I, and I can't remember, I think it is common for you to order a follow-up uh, assessment at community corrections, but he was asking me if the, the other one was, would suffice for that. But in any event, he's gonna do whatever you order. Um, so, your Honor, also, uh, he does have his GED, and he's 27 years old. He has a full-time job. He's working 40-plus hours a week and even on weekends to raise some additional income. He understands he's going to have some fines and costs. So he's asking that you follow the recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Heaton, before we uh, proceed with the sentencing, I do have a question about the community corrections part since he is in Grand Rapids. Um, do we do we know if there's a program there where he doesn't, it's not gonna work for him to get in CCOP or any of the programs here locally since he is in um, Grand Rapids unless it's done via uh, um, online. Do you know if it is, if, if they can accommodate him since he's in Grand Rapids or? So the, the CCLP class, he'll be able to do all online okay. uh, through Washtenaw County. Um, and then there's community corrections in Grand Rapids where he would be able to do testing. I see. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Mr. Barnett, is there anything that you would like to add? I, I don't have any comments, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. Anything additional before I hear from your client, Mr. Bannis? No, Your Honor. Well, yes, actually, just to clarify, he lives in Wyoming, but yeah, but that is right, right next to there. 
He lives in Wyoming, Michigan, but that is right next to Grand Rapids. So just okay. so Mr. Heaton understands that when they discuss those issues. Okay. Um, so anyway, thank you very much, Mr. Heaton. And nothing further from me, Your Honor. And Mr. Horton, if you'd like to say anything, you, you can address the court. You're not required to. All right. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Um, it's your opportunity to say something if you would like, sir. Yeah, I don't have really anything to say. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, I have reviewed the pre-sentence investigation report as well as the assessment in this case. Um, I think as I reviewed the assessment, one of the things that stood out for me was was the end of the assessment, um, which I agreed with. Um, that I think Mr. Horton's thoughts on where he is with the, his symptoms um, of alcoholism and or drug dependence are not in line with what the assessment shows. And I'm hoping that he can be able to see that during this process. Um, and that these interventions will help. I understand that Mr. Horton doesn't see it. I get that. I mean that during this process, you will be able to see it, sir. I'm concerned about progression. Um, having said that, it is uh, the sentence of the court that you serve 93 days in jail, credit for two days served. 91 days are suspended. I believe that uh, probation is necessary for the rehabilitative uh, purposes here. And five days of community service, fines and costs um, for a total of $625, inclusive of the state um, minimum rights and victims' rights fees. $30 per month probation oversight fee, complete the substance abuse assessment at community corrections, and follow our recommendations, sign a release of information to the probation department. You would attend the MAD victim impact panel and meet with probation when and where directed, including any and all home visits. There's no use of possession of alcohol, marijuana, illegal drugs, or drug paraphernalia. And there's no use of possession of firearms, firearm components. You had a drug test four times per month, including ETGs. and attend 12 step meetings two times per week. Mr. Horton, I see that, um, I appreciate that you were honest with the assessor in um, telling her that you continue to use alcohol, although it was a condition of your bond to not do so. So it is a condition of your sentence to not do so. If you are found to be using alcohol, it would be a violation and you could do jail time. Do you understand that, sir? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. There you go. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. You need to contact the probation department to sign your contract, sir. Okay. Mr. Horton, do you have the phone number for, for probation? No. 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 Okay, Your Honor, I can get that to him after court unless you want to do that now. Do you have a pen, Mr. Horton? No. All right. If you don't sign your contract, that will also be a violation of your sentence. So apparently Mr. Bannis is gonna get that to you. Uh, not signing your contract will issue a bench warrant for you. Do you understand that, sir? Yes. All right. Mr. Horton, I'm gonna send that to you after email, after court today. So if you just keep a lookout for that and then you can call All right. Me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. You're all set, Mr. Horton. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mr. Reed? Ready, Your Honor. Is your client present with you, Mr. Reed? Yes, he is. He's in office. I'm going to let you talk directly to the court's call. Right. The reporter had been on the phone to the Okay. Good morning, Your Honor. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank God. Sitting in that chair, I'll sit over here. We are ready to proceed at this time. There's been an offer, I believe, and we are going to accept that offer. Can I call the case yet, sir? Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Ypsilanti Township versus Ryan Patterson, 21T00206. 
Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Yes, good morning, Your Honor. May it please the court, Daniel Reed, number 30965. Appearing on behalf of the defendant, we do contend this matter proceeding by zone. Mr. Patterson, would you state your name for the record, sir? Ryan Patterson. Thank you. All right, today's the end time schedule for pretrial in this matter. <clears throat> yes. That's correct, Your Honor. I did uh, extend an offer that people would add account two of disorderly, uh, excuse me, disorderly jostling. That's MCL 750.1671L. That is a 90 day and or $500 offense. In exchange for a plea of guilty to the added count two, the people will dismiss the original count one. All right. You said the coach very fast. Seven. Uh, yeah, seven five, five, seven. <laughs> I'll, I'll go slower. Okay. Seven five zero. Okay. Point one six seven one L. Seven one L. All right. Thank you. Ninety day. Ninety day five hundred dollar. Thank you. And that's a guilty plea to that count? Uh, correct. Yes. All right. Is that a true and accurate? Um, Offer and plea acceptance, Mr. Reed. Yes, Your Honor, it is. I explained my client's rights pursuant to law. He wants to avail himself of that offer. All right, thank, thank you, the prosecution, for extending it. Thank you. All right, Mr. Reed, would you please raise your right hand to be sworn? I will, Your Honor, but I'm not. Thank you. Sorry, yes, Mr. Patterson. No, Having a bad day, apparently. No, I know. <laughs> working hard, that's all. <laughs> all right, sir, do you swear for him to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So I'll be guys. Yes, ma'am. All right. Do you put your hand down, sir? You heard the offer that's been placed on the record by the attorneys in this matter, sir? Yes, ma'am. Is that what you wish to do today? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. I'm gonna go over some rights. I'm gonna be giving up by entering into this agreement, okay? Yes, keep your voice out. All right, you have the right to have a trial by a jury and you have the right to have the assistance of an attorney. You have the right to call witnesses to speak to you at trial. You can get an order signed by this court to require that they come to court. You have the right to be here and question all witnesses against you at trial and to be a witness for yourself or you could choose to remain silent. If you chose to remain silent, the prosecutor could not comment on that. In addition to that, you to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Do you understand those rights, sir? Yes, ma'am. You understand you're going to be giving up all those rights with the exception of your attorney. You will keep your attorney through the sentencing phase. Do you understand yeah. that? Yes, ma'am. There will be no automatic right to appeal this decision. So basically, if you make this decision today, um, it's likely to be a decision that will stick with you. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, ma'am. In addition to that, if you're on probation or parole, this could be considered a violation of that. Are you on probation or parole? Yes, ma'am. All right. You understand that it could be, which one are you on, probation or parole? Probation. All right. You understand that this plea could be a violation of your probation? Yes, ma'am. All right. And in addition to that, um, are there any immigration consequences that we need to be concerned about? No, ma'am. Right. And understanding all of those rights that I just told you about and the potential for the probation violation, do you still wish to enter into this plea at this time, sir? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'm going to turn to the date of offense, to the uh, charge of disorderly. Josh, how do you plead, sir? Guilty. All right. Thank you. Does anyone force you to enter into that plea? No, ma'am. Does anyone threaten you in any way, shape, or form? No, ma'am. You do this of your own free will. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. On the date of uh, March 27, 2021, were you in the vicinity of 2693 East Ellsworth in Ypsilanti Township? Yes, ma'am. And at that time, was there some disorderly conduct going on, sir? If so, what was it? 
Yes, ma'am. It was a, it was an altercation at a barber shop. Okay. And based on that altercation, were the police called? Yes, ma'am. And were you a part of the altercation? Yes, ma'am. What did you do? Uh, basically, it was sure. like it was like a heated it was like a heated argument, and we got into it, and I, I basically swung on the defendant on the defendant. Well, you swung on Mr. Ishmael. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Barnett, are you satisfied? People are satisfied, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Defense is satisfied, Your Honor. Thank you so much, Mr. Reed. What is the plan with respect to sentencing in this matter? Your Honor, because um, of, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, counsel. I was going to ask to go for immediate sentencing. Your Honor, I was actually going to ask for us to set a sentencing date. Uh, it may be that we do um, you know, resolve it entirely at the time of the sentencing, but given the fact that he's already on probation and we started off with a victim's rights crime, um, I, I would prefer to have a sentencing date. So. All right. Um, are you asking for a pre-sentence report to come from probation? Mr. Barnett, are you frozen? That must be no. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Am Mr. I still Barnett. frozen? No, you're not. You're you're actually <laughs> laughing now. Um, are you asking for a pre-sentence report? Okay. <laughs> yes. yes. All right. Yes. All right. Sentencing will be in uh, four weeks. August sixteenth, two thousand and twenty-one at 10 a.m. I do have a trial on that day, Your Honor, I hate to say. Okay. Two seconds, Susan. Tuesday. Tuesday. The 25th? What'd you say, Your Honor? I'm sorry. The 25th, does that work, Mr. Reed? The 25th? Yeah. Oh, 25th. That's a good day, Your Honor. Thank you. Good night, you guys are in the all right, and I'm setting this for a, uh, a sentencing on that date and giving time because it is a victim's rights case and under the victim's rights um, law, he is entitled to be present. So, Thank you. We appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Anna. Fine to continue. Mr. Prosecutor, we really thank you. You were very helpful. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank you, Counsel. Ypsilanti Township versus James Bell, case number 21, W001502ST. Good morning, Aaron. Paul Barnett, I'll be happy. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Bell. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. So, um, Mr. Bell representing himself in this matter. I don't see him. All right, Mr. Bell, you don't have an attorney in this particular case, sir? No, Your Honor. Right. Have you had a chance to talk to the prosecutor at, at all about it, sir? No. Do you need to do that? No, ma'am. All right, do you know what you want to do today, sir? Yep. Right. Uh, uh, not guilty. All right, so you want to set it for a trial, sir? Uh, that's what I thought this was. No, today's just the pre-trial, sir. Oh, um, yeah, still not guilty. All right. <laughs> Mr. Bell, if I might, uh, right now you're charged with a, a misdemeanor offense of reckless driving. <clears throat> I would be willing to add a count two of careless driving, which is uh, a civil infraction. It's not a misdemeanor. Um, it still carries, I believe, three points, but the reckless driving can, uh, carries six points and is a misdemeanor. So if you were to admit responsibility to the careless driving, 
which is the civil infraction, three points. I would dismiss the original reckless driving charge. Um, see, I'm all new to this. <laughs> um, I was completely trying to fight it, uh, being, not, uh, being not guilty. Like, I have – what was it? I was just going to say, that's fine. I, I'm just making this offer to try to resolve it prior to doing that. So it's, it's your decision. Oh, uh, yeah, still plead not guilty. All right. Did you reject having an attorney in this matter? Is that what happened? No. I just never got one. <laughs> okay. I'm going to appoint the public defender to try to assist you with this matter because you're going to end up um, having to either do a bench trial or a jury trial. And you need to make that choice whether you're going okay. to do a jury trial and you go on the trial by yourself. And now you don't even understand the procedures here. Um, it's probably yeah. not in your best interest. So I have to ask you a few questions. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> are you employed, sir? Yes. And where are you, who are you employed with? Uh, Garrett Landscape Group. I uh, do professional mowing uh, residentials. How long have you been with them? I've been there for uh, four years. Four years, okay. What's your average take home pay on a monthly basis? Um, closely to maybe 2000. Do you have a car, sir? What's that? You have a car? Yes, I do, ma'am. And what type of car? What's the value of it? Uh, about three grand. Do you still owe a more, um, do you still owe a note on it? No, it's uh, privately owned. Okay. And what type is that? What year is it? It's a 2001 Dodge Durango. Okay. Do you have any other uh, assets like a bank account or anything like that, sir? Uh, no, except for green dot, my little prepaid card thing. Gotcha. What about your obligations monthly? What are, What is your rent? Uh, three fifty. Food, water, things like that. Uh, phone. How much is your phone? I'm gonna save it a three uh, three phone line. I think it was like maybe like three hundred. Okay. Paying as much for your phone as you are your rent. Wow. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I take care of my grandparents and my mother. Uh, okay. They got bad uh, health, and so my grandpa doesn't try to cut my legs out from underneath me too bad. <laughs> okay. Any children and child support, anything like that? Yes, I have child support and I got uh, four kids. How much is your child support monthly, sir? Oh, man. Um, I think it was like 295 I believe. Total? And that's just, that's just for one child, but the other ones I have underneath my roof. Okay. All right. And you, you're taking care of three children? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. All right, I'll appoint the PD for you, sir. Um, and I will adjourn this matter out. How long do you need, Mr. Bannis? Um, Your Honor, probably two weeks. I would like to get a copy of the police report if there is one. I'll send out that discovery request to Mr. Barnett today. Um, and then... So I, I'm, I'm thinking two weeks should suffice uh, or whatever the available next date is after that. I think, the, I think we'll give you the three just to be sure. August 11th, I think it is. Yeah. August 11th, 2021 at 9 a.m. Do you need a breakout room to get his contact information, Mr. Vanis? Your Honor, I just, um, Mr. I don't think so. If Mr. Bell, do you, can you see the chat? I just sent you my cell phone and my email address yes, sir. To, to everyone. Because I don't have your contact information. So will you call me and email me? Yep. Okay. All right, Mr. Bell. And then when you come back, he can help you decide which which uh, route you want to go um, in terms of. Okay. 
Um, I have one question. Yes, sir. Um, I submitted before my first quarter date some papers and information on my GPS location on our work truck. Um, did those get uh, looked at by any chance? Mr. Bell, are you saying you have documents that you think can support a defense? Yes, I do. Then I'll talk to you about that and you can send those to me. Okay. Okay. Um, I do see documents in here, Mr. Bell. Um, it, it doesn't quite work that way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a part of why you need to have an attorney. Okay. okay. But um, Mr. Bannis, if by some chance you need to get copies of those, they are in the court's file. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Anna. We're good. You're all set, Mr. Bell. Have a good day. All right. All right. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Ypsilanti Township versus Sylvia McGowan, case number 17T00310. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Andrew Bannis with it on behalf of Ms. McGowan. Yes. Hello, Ms. McGowan. Good. How are you? I'm good. All right. We're here for a violation of And it appears that she has completed that art program as she was supposed to. And we're down to just fines and costs that need to be paid. Mr. Bannis? Yes, Your Honor. Um, so the information I have, one of my assistants spoke with Ms. McGowan, and I am happy to, to see that she did complete that program, um, that she, uh, a proposed plan going for, forward is $150 a month. Um, is that true, Ms. McGowan? Is that a realistic amount that you might be able to pay going forward? Um, yes. Um... I feel like if I was going to pay like a little more then yeah, but for right now, that's a set um, price. So that's the minimum you could pay and you're being cautious so as not to overstate the situation. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. That is acceptable to the court. When will the first payment be made? Um, I can actually make a payment today. Thank you. Make a payment today. And then you'll make uh, payments on um, the 21st of every month, by the 21st of every month. Will that work for you? Okay. It, yes. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, I'm fine. Okay. All right. Payment today and pay by 21st of every month. Okay. All right. Anything else I need to get from her? No? All right. Nothing oh, further than I'm Oh, I'm sorry. That's... All right. All right. Thank you. You're all set. You okay. Thank you. Make those payments. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. You too. You want to let them in there? Okay, go ahead. All right, there's a phone number that we just let into the virtual courtroom. It ends in 6780. 6780. Could you please tell us your first and last name? Brianna Harris. All right, Ms. Harris, thank you. We will rename you. Please mute yourself until your case is called. Thank you. Oh, Galaxy A51 5G. Mm -hmm. All right, you need to pretend before it's be honest. Galaxy A51 5G, sir, could you please tell us your first and last name? We've been trying to communicate with you in the chat, but you probably didn't see it. Is that me? Yes, that's you, sir. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, my name's Rodney Belcher. Rodney Belcher, okay, we will rename you, sir. I'm and sorry? We're gonna put your name on the screen. So okay. We name you, please um, mute yourself until your case is called. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Call we'll call the case of Washington. Mm, that's not right.
Ayan. Okay. All right. Ypsilanti Township versus Crown Williams, 21T00241 OM. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Andrew Vannis on behalf of Mr. Williams. Thank you. We are here for a pretrial today. Yes, Hello. you are. Hello, Mr. Williams. How are you, sir? You're muted, sir. Hello. How you doing? I'm pretty good. And you, sir? I'm okay. John, all right. We have uh, spoken to Mr. Williams twice over the past few days. I do need to ask for a brief adjournment for discovery purposes. What do you need, Mr. Burn Mr. Burns? Could I have that three-week date if it's still available? Yes, it is available. Thank you. August 11th, 2021 at 9 a.m. for a pre pretrial. Andrew, just to clarify, are you looking for the police report? Because it looks like we sent that already. Is there something else I need to get for you? No, it's, uh, it is the police report, Mr. Barnett. I just checked again and I'll have to follow up with you because I don't personally. Yeah, have that's it. fine. I can, I can resend it too. That's fine. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, you are all set, Mr. Williams. Thank you, sir. Okay. You too. Thank Ypsilanti Township versus Patrick Davis, 19T00212 and 20W00385 OT. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Andrew Bannis with it on behalf of Mr. Davis, who is present. Hello, Mr. Davis. How you doing, Your Honor? How you doing this morning? Okay. All right. Your Honor, we were here at a final settlement conference on June 24th, and Mr. Davis was not present. I discussed that with him, and he apologized to me. He apologized to the court. He says he was actually connected, um, but I don't know. I, I really don't know what happened, but he, he promises the court that he was connected, at least where he thought he was supposed to be. I don't know if he was in the waiting room. I know your court it's pretty much mastered Zoom at this point. So I really don't know what happened, but he, he assures the court that he was not, he, he was at least connected or trying to connect. Um, so again, we apologize for that. And we're asking for another final settlement conference date. He certainly obviously knows how to connect. He's here today. Um, and there's also, I, did you, I don't know, I'm sorry if you called both cases. We're not appointed on the other case. Um, the, ticket, the ticket case, he's, um, he thinks that this is the only case holding him up to get a license. And, and, if that's, and he's asking for permission to pay the $45 clearance fee if it hasn't already been uh, permitted. And he fully intends to get his license as soon as possible and then work something out, hopefully with Mr. Barnett or, and I'm happy to help him with that also. And of course, if you wanna ask him any questions about anything that that's perfectly fine. Thank you. Um, I don't have any questions. I will say that we obviously did check our waiting room um, and, we're, and there was nobody in the waiting room on the date of the final settlement conference. That's, um, I'll give you a new final settlement conference date.
Where are we at on that? November 18th. November 18th, 2021, 11 a.m. Jury selection will be December 3rd, 2021, at 9 a.m. Finance continue. I will allow him to pay his SOS fees and ticket number 20W003853. Thank you. Excuse me, Yana. All right, sir. Yana. Yes, sir. When I pay that, will I be able to go in and um, send an appointment to Secretary of State to um, take my test to, for my license? Because I never required ever only the license, and I just took care of a lot of suspensions. And this was the only one that should be sure. holding me up. Right. You're asking me to look at your record and see where you are? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. One second, please. Yes, ma'am. Um, I don't, I don't think this is the only one from what I can tell. When I first start looking here, you have a, it's going to go way back for you here, but you have a, an event from December 1st of 1994. Where is that? Like out of 37th District Court in Warren. Oh, I just took it care of that. Like that was 400. I got my, um. Receipt. They supposed to send me a copy. I called them and they said everything was clear. They were supposed to send my copy work. I mean, my paperwork through electronics. That was okay. 400 and uh, some dollars I paid. All right. As of this morning at 7.36 a.m., it's not showing up. I'm not saying that it's not. When did you do it? Um, I did that. Did um, what's this? This is July. Yeah. I did that in May because oh, it's I, not I did. I did it before I had the um, trial thing because they told me the only way I'd be able to get my license if I took care of my suspension. So when I called everybody, I need to recall them because I know I sent them the money and paid it. So I'm Okay, it's, it's still showing. Okay. okay. And then you have the one still showing at 14A1 from uh, 1996. Um, Is that out in um, Ipsy? It's in... Ann Arbor is the one that's over by Hogback Road. Yes. Yeah, that oh, one's still showing as well. I just got to go pay a forty-five dollar clearance fee on that one, I think. Okay, and that's still there. All right, I'll keep going. Mm -hmm. The first one you said was 37 District Court? Correct. And Warren. All right, I'm going to have to call them when we get off the phone. I know I paid that. Could you reply um, the second one again? You said 14A? Um, 14A1. You want the ticket number? Yes, ma'am. Ticket number DI one nine six seven six eight. Okay, let me repeat that. D one I. One second. D, no, it's DI one. Okay, nine, there six, we go. <laughs> DI D as in Dave, I as in um, Ice, one nine six seven six eight. Correct. I'm still reading. Give me a moment. Mm -hmm. When I called forward to everything I had Ipsy, they said everything was clear besides the one thing that I was um, up against now with the um, driving on suspended. But I'm going to recall all these and get all this taken care of today. 
Okay. There's only once. That's that's all you have left. Excuse me. That's it. That's all you have left. Actually, I don't even see. Let's see here. Just those two. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What is this citation number? I don't actually see the one from today's ticket. I don't see a twenty. I don't see a. I don't see a suspension from here that you need to pay. It's just those two. I think you're mixing the 14 A ones and the 14 B up. I think you have the 14 A one that you need to pay the real estate report from that long time ago, and that 37th district. I don't see one from here, but you can call 14 B directly and have them do a check for you. But I don't see one. Okay. And I am writing that you can pay it if there is one. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, sir. Good luck to you. Okay, thank you. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Yeah. All right. The Ypsilanti Township versus Rashawn Byers. Tickets number 19W005533, 18W010754, A and 19 W 000554. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. <coughs> We're all driving while license suspended. Hello, Mr. Byers. Good morning, Your Honor. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Right, we're here for pre trials and show causes today. And the pre trial is in ticket number 5533. And then the show causes are on the other two matters because you have paid your. We were going to do a five day jail work program. Correct. Did you do that? Yes. Can you tell me? It does show that he completed that. All right. So the driver's responsibility, the um, 0054554 is completed. Closed. And so is the 18W010754A.
So uh, we're just here as for the pretrial. Um, the 19W005533. His driving record is still showing us with both though. So. Mr. Byers, do you know what you want to do with respect to the driving while license suspended ticket from the 2019 case? <clears throat> yes. Um... I'm looking at my driver responsibility uh, papers because I, you know, I got those Wayne County tickets, and I was told that if I take care of all of that, that I'd probably be able to get this throughout. Yeah. The thing is, I'm just getting held up down there because I had to make some payment plans and stuff like that, but everything in action, you know. So, because if I keep if I keep pleading guilty to these, you see what you know what I'm saying? It's not making sense. I'm never gonna be able to drive again. So, Mr. Barnett, one of his revocations is because of this ticket. Uh, that doesn't make sense. I mean, it shouldn't be revoked because of this ticket because it's still pending. I understand. <laughs> is it the January 1st? Let me see here. It says date of violation and citation, January 21st. 2019. Your Honor. Yes, sir. The um the arresting officer on that uh, event, he he explained to me because he put me over more than once. And he understood that I was going back and forth to work. I was commuting back and forth to work. And um he told me it was something, I forgot what it's called. He said it's a little permit I could get or something where I could get these things away because I do got to get to money, you know what I'm saying? Right. Oh, Mr. Barnett, it's not this ticket. It's the other 19, 19 W. Uh, okay. Five, 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 four. So I, I uh, lost connection when Mr. Uh, Byers was explaining his license status, but it sounded to me like he's having, he's a little ways away from being, having a valid license. Um, I'd be willing to do something else, which would be uh, reduce this case to a no operator's license on person which is a zero point um, non-abstracted offense. He could plead guilty to that, no ops on person, and I'll dismiss the driving with suspended license. Do you understand the offer that's being made, Mr. Byers? Yes. And you can take that offer or you can, and I'll give you some additional time to continue working, but I'm not gonna give you any more than like another 60 days to continue working on this. Um, you can take that offer. You can continue. Yeah, working. so excuse me. Um, what is the penalties and the fees with that that come with that offer? Uh, it's a ninety-day, one hundred-dollar misdemeanor, um, and you know, obviously, it's up to the judge to determine what the sentence would be. But again, it's uh, it's zero points, and it's not <clears throat> sent to the secretary of state. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. We could do that. Man. Let's just get this over with. All right, just so you know, I usually do 275 on that particular ticket. Well, how are you feeling today? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I'm I want to know before I go in, you know what I'm saying? Feel, I'm feeling the same as every other day. <laughs> 275. <laughs> All right, yeah, I just want to get it over with. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. Please raise your right hand to be sworn, sir. You swear if I'm tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you guys? Yes. All right, thank you. It is my understanding that the prosecutor is going to do an added count two of no operator's license on person. No operator's license on person is still a misdemeanor, sir. It carries a maximum of 90 days and or $100 fine plus court costs. As I indicated to you, um, I would do a $270 total fines and costs in this particular case. Is that what you wish to do, sir? Yes, Your Honor. All right, I'm going to go over some whites you're going to be giving up by entering into this plea. 
Um, so you have the right to have a trial uh, by a jury and to have the assistance of an attorney. You have the right to call witnesses to speak for you at that trial. You can get an order signed by the court to require that they come to court. You have the right to see, hear, and question all witnesses against you at trial and to be a witness for yourself or to remain silent. If you chose to remain silent, then the prosecutor could not comment on that. You also have the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand those rights, sir? Yes. You understand you'll be giving up all those rights? Yes. All right. <clears throat> If you plead uh, guilty today, there is not an automatic right to appeal this decision, sir. So this decision will stick with you. Do you understand that? Yes. In addition to that, if you're on probation or parole, it could still be considered a violation of any probation or parole. Are you on probation or parole at this time? No. Okay. And um, are there any immigration consequences that we need to be concerned about? No. To the charge of no operator's license on person, how do you plead, sir? Guilty. All right. Does anyone force you to plead guilty today? No. Anyone threaten you in any way, shape, or form? No. All right, thank you. On June 13th of 2019, were you driving in the vicinity of Michigan Ave and Home Road in Ypsilanti Township, sir? Yes. And at that time, did you not have a valid operator's license on your person? Yes. Thank you. Even if there's a valid basis for the plea, it has been normally and willingly made, Mr. Barnett. People are satisfied, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, anything you want to say prior to sentencing, sir? No. All right. Thank you. Fines and costs for a total of $275. Can you pay that today? Today? No, I cannot. How soon can you pay that, sir? Mm, 30 days. All right. I probably need 60 days. Like I said, I'm really, like, the pandemic hit me kind of hard. I ain't getting no relief or nothing like that. You know? Okay. September 10th? Okay. September 10th? Yes. Yes. All right. All right. We will schedule for it to be paid by September 10th, 2021. Is okay? Yes. All right, thank you. You're all set, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. Must be in there somewhere. Didn't and take up anything else. Can you get back to me out? I'm sorry. Can you get me out of here? I'm trying to get. Oh out. yes, I can help you out. Yes, sir. <laughs> I get it. There's nothing in Township versus Michael Holder, case number 21T00208. Paul Barnett on behalf of the Township. Andrew Bannis on behalf of Mr. Holder. Mr. Holder, can you hear us? Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Holder. How are you this morning, sir? All right. All right. We're here for an adjourned free trial in this matter. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. This is kind of a unique situation. We actually had a um, an offer and, and a COBS agreement. Um, and Mr. Holder... Uh, and I have had several discussions about this case. The bottom line is, and, and I do appreciate all the work everyone's done to see if we could resolve this, but we are requesting a jury trial and a final settlement conference date. 
And that that is, of course, Your Honor, based on what I believe are valid defenses here. Thank you. Final settlement conference in this matter will be November the 18th, 2021 at 11 a.m. And jury selection will be December 3rd, 2021 at 9 a.m. And bond is continued. Thank you. Thank you. The, the terms of like the, the driving. Oh, yes. <laughs> I haven't said, well, I asked Mr. Holder to remind me of that. Your Honor, I don't know if you, you can or willing, well, you can, but I don't know if you're willing to do this. Mr. Holder, for his work, and he has a chauffeur's license, he tells me, drives musicians um, out of state, you know, for, the, for their work and for their uh, concerts and recordings. He's Mr. asking Holder, if you- One second, Mr. Bannis, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Mr. Holder, can you show your screen, please? Sure, hold on. Uh -huh. All right, thank you. All right, now you may proceed. Um, I don't know if um, one of his bond conditions is do not leave the state of Michigan without permission from the court, but if it is, he's asking for permission to leave for work purposes only. He's actually been turning down some jobs because of that condition. Although he doesn't have any specific dates right now, so I told him, you know, we'll try to get that bond condition removed. And if not, then we'll have to follow up with some specific dates, but he doesn't have them now. It's only for, for work purposes. And when you say leave the state, he just goes all over the, the, the country? Uh, or what? Well, in, in 2018, I did a nationwide tour, but lately it's been more just like single shows in uh, Indiana, Chicago. Uh, Ohio, just been to like the kind of like the tri state area. Mr. Barnett? Your Honor, I don't have any particular concerns about him leaving the state. I think he's uh, he's appeared a couple of different times. And uh, given the nature of the case, I, again, I don't think I have any concerns. I'll just defer to your judgment on that. All right, this is a um, malicious destruction of property case. I don't see it as a um, assaultive behavior of any sort. So I will uh, change the bond conditions to say you may leave the state for work purposes only. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. All right, that bond condition has been changed. Otherwise, bond continues. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. You want us to change that bond condition? Ypsilanti Township versus Rodney Belcher, case number 19-T-00450. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Andrew Bannis with it on behalf of Mr. Belcher. Hello, Mr. Belcher. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, you? I'm good. <clears throat> All right, we're back here again. We were here on June 24th for the same concern for the uh, failure to pay, but you didn't show up on that date, and I issued a show cause. Okay. Um, you're here today for the failure to pay $4,169.63. Your Honor, I, I, I did try, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to connect with Mr. Belger to get an update, but as you noted, he has had other assistant public defenders in the past, and this case goes back a while. So I either need to, Mr. Belcher, do you want to address the court on that, or do you want to speak with me privately um, so I can get an update? I mean, it looks like it looks like this amount is restitution, so that's obviously treated as a very high priority um, by the court and the prosecutor's office. Um, well, my, uh, I've been having a, a lot of stuff going on personally. We lost our house in a fire and um, a lot of personal stuff. And my, the, the attorney told me that I could, uh, when I, uh, with the judgment, uh, said I would have as long as I could do to get it, you know, together. And I've just been having like 
a, a hard time the last couple of years. I've had a stroke and stuff like that too. So I just, you know, I'm having issues with that. And to be honest, that $4,000 was um, an exorbitant amount because the dog didn't require, that was what they asked for. The actual fees were only a couple hundred dollars. So, okay, so, so let me ask you a question. And again, if we need to speak privately, but I'm trying to sure. help be efficient here. You, you were given a payment plan, according to what I can see, of $174 a month quite a while ago. Is, uh -huh. Can you propose any plan going forward that, that would make any payments? Can you propose any payment plan going forward? Or is your situation such that you're, you're just so strapped? You know, yeah, that's basically, I'm living in a hotel right now. I mean, we're, we're literally homeless. And um, I'm, like I said, this, this was more of a money grab to me because the dog's fine. The lady just, and you and I can talk about that, but yeah. as far as we can tell, you've already been ordered to pay that amount. So I know you, yeah, I, I, I understand. I, I can talk to you about stuff that the other attorney and I talked about. So yeah, if you, if we could, uh, talk personally and then have this rescheduled or whatever it's really up to the judge your honor I, um i'm trying to see if there could be some something going forward um and obviously it appears to be very difficult all right um mr belcher you were sentenced before judge pope back on january 15th of 2020 and at mm -hmm. that time um, Judge Pope ordered a sentence for the restitution in the amount of $4,169.63. Just so that you fully understand, there's no revisiting that number that has been decided and it's done. Okay, so that's the number that is owed at this time. Um, he gave you 24 months of probation and apparently no additional um, terms for that probation. You just had to pay the fines and costs. And you haven't paid anything on it, not not one dime. Yeah. Well, as I said, I've had issues, and we I've had I had a stroke in February of two thousand um, twenty, and then, um, like I said, we had a house fire. I've had a lot of issues with my daughter in the hospital. She's had mental issues. I've just had a hard time, and like I said, I feel uh, that this was. A bad a bad judgment anyway because I don't know is there any way I can appeal because I sh literally the the payment if you look through the payment thing this was just money that they asked for in above taking care of the actual uh, the, the doctor's bill and I, I feel like that's heard what I just said huh what I just said was there's no revisiting that did you hear me okay. say that sir yeah. Do you also understand that this is a matter for which um, it, all right. Um, so, so Mr. Belcher, the, the issue is you, this is time to talk to your uh, attorney, your, your attorney, and I'll give you some additional time to do that. So the two of you can come back with hopefully a payment plan or some, some uh, Thank you, to this. And, and I'll make sure my client understands the the range of possible consequences here. In addition to that, he failed to appear last time, so I'm not sure what happened with that. Mr. Belcher, I, I, I couldn't reach you by phone, so I am sorry that yeah. I don't have an answer for the court. Do you, do you, can you explain what happened? As far as what? Not being there last time? Yep. Um, but, because we don't have a physical address right now. I didn't receive any notification. We literally, you know, the house, I had a house fire and it's not livable and the there, there's no mail. Honor, could, could I have a brief breakout room with my client to make sure I have his email and phone number? Because that's, that's why I'm not prepared today. And I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's okay. I understand. Of course, August 11th, 2021. And, um, 9 a.m. is going to be the next court date, and I'll give you a brief breakout room so you can talk to him and get his contact info so you can be prepared for the hearing the next time. I understand. Thank He's, you, Honor. I understand the situation you've been. Thank you. you. Know that, but this is restitution, so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
strawberries. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Banis, we'll be back shortly and then we can resume calling the rest of the cases. Um, Ms. Shimwell and Ms. Uh, Harris. It'll be Harris first and then Shimwell because Harris was in before you, Ms. Shimwell, okay? Yes, ma'am. I, I saw you nod your head, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Ms. Harris. Hello. Hello, Ms. Okay. Harris. How are you? Just wondering if I was still in the call. You are still on the call, ma'am. We we're just waiting for the attorney to come back. He's in the breakout session with the last client. He's supposed to get a phone number. Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. All right, he is back, Ms. Harris. Ypsilanti Township versus Brianna Harris, case number 18T00214. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Andrew Bannis was on behalf of Ms. Harris. All right. Um, today's day and time schedule for sentencing in this, mac in this matter. And um, this one, the defendant did complete the assessment on time, but somehow or another, we weren't able to locate it. Um, and so I have it if I can send it to someone. I have the receipt if I can send it to someone. I'll send, I'll send it. it. I, I think they have it now, Mr. Um, sorry, Ms. Harris. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, we do have yes. it now. We just didn't have it. And now we're then we had some difficulty getting the, the other documents that go along with the report. So we do need to adjourn it out. Do we have one week? Ms. Okay, Harris? wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What else do you guys need from Matt? Is there a way that I can call me and fax this over? I really don't need this adjourn. I've been doing this for four years. Like, really? Come on. <laughs> like, really? So, Ms. Harris, there's, they, they, we just, oh. she, the, and this is your lawyer, the, the court can't proceed without the document, which they now have. Um, you did the assessment on July 2nd. Everyone knows that. And also, um, if there are any other documents oh. that probation needs, pretty confident that, um, oh that it's not, it's nothing that if there's anything else they need. I'm, I, I think it's just a copy of the police report and I'm certain that we can get that to them. And you don't need to, um, we, we won't need you to, um, do anything for that. So I know okay, it's, so, it's oh just gosh. Ms. Harris, um, first of all, I'm going to say I apologize that we can't go forward today. However, on the other hand, so the reason how we can we like, can you please stop talking oh, over me? Uh, crazy. Did you hear me, ma'am? Yes, I heard you. Yes, I heard you. So the reason why we've been doing it for four years is because we've been warned it at least four or five times. So I apologize that we're not prepared to go today, but I fear you might be a little bit more understanding given your history in this case. <laughs> okay, so now you guys need the police report from this accident that happened four years ago. Ms. Harris, you, you really don't need to I'm work. just really frustrated. I'm sorry. I'm really frustrated. I need my license. I need my license. This is very frustrating to me. I need my license. I can't even get to work. How am I supposed to get to work? That's what 
so, okay, if we're going to readjourn this, is there a way that I'll be able to get like some type of permit to get back and forth to work? So I'm not getting the pulled over. That's not the sentencing does not get you your license. But this is what I need to clear to get my license. And yeah. from my understanding, this is what. And from my hmm. understanding and revealing this file, you're the reason we're still here today because you have not shown up <laughs> at least four or five times. Okay, so what do I need to proceed? What do I need to do to proceed? What do you guys need to do so we can get this? Do you want up? to come back in one week to have this done, ma'am? Do you want to be here next week? What day and what time? It's always on a Wednesday at the same time, 10 o'clock. Okay, let's do Wednesday at 10 o'clock. I don't know if you understand the nature of this, but you're here for operating while intoxicated and you're giving the judge attitude. That's probably not a wise decision. I don't have an attitude at all. Well, I think everyone else on this call would disagree with you. I don't have an attitude at all, but I am a bit frustrated on what's going on because how come this isn't pulled up while I'm at court or when it's time for me to be at court and now I have to go back and go back and go back. This is this is crazy. The only time you've come back and come back and come back is because you failed to appear. I've said that like six times and I'm about tired of saying it. Your Honor, my client was sentenced back in 2019 and way Ooh. back then she did not complete the assessment. So believe me, um, I will explain that to her. And she finally did it on July 2nd. That's so the court is not responsible for the delay. So I apologize and I will speak with Ms. Harris after court today. July 28th, 2021 at 10 a.m. for sentencing. Your bond is continued. Thank you, Yana. Thank you. Mr. Belcher, I think you can disconnect after our breakout now. Yes, sir. You're all you're all set, Mr. Belcher. We'll see you next time. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Ypsilanti Township versus Terry Shimwell, 20 W001572. <clears throat> as well as 15 W191624. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Andrew Vanis, Assistant Public Defender. Um, it appears our office was appointed on the uh, 15 W civil infraction, which seems like something that doesn't really occur. Um, and so, and also for some reason, I apologize. I did not, I do not have a file for that. It appears she hasn't possibly, if I'm correct, she hasn't been arraigned on that. And, and also because of the time lapse, I think there's a default judgment. She owes $309 on that. I think you are correct. Hello, Ms. Shinwell. How are you today, ma'am? I've been better, but I'm okay. Thank you for asking. How are you? Are you sick? I've been having a terrible um, migraine and I have a sinus infection and some type of virus. So I'm on like steroids and some other stuff. It's been affecting my ass. I'm sorry to hear that. <clears throat> um, Mr. Ban has asked to the child restraint ticket, which is what that is, the 15W191624. You're correct. She didn't appear at any point in time. So then at some point, uh, the default entered, and then she's here for a show cause for failure to, to pay. 
after the show cause was entered, she owes a total of $309 on that particular matter. Okay, do you understand that, Ms. Shimwell? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then as to the 20W001572OT, um, we're here on a pretrial for that one. And that's an expired license plate. And as for her record, she doesn't have much on it, but she is still suspended. Let's see why. It's because of the child restraint ticket, it appears. Um, well, it's a couple things. Uh, she needs to clear up that child restraint ticket in the 35th district court case uh, impeding traffic ticket that she also needs to clear up as well. Excuse me, Judge. How much is that? I know I've asked before, but I'm writing. I'm taking notes because I'm at home now. I was not at home the last time. Okay. The 34th District Court impeding traffic ticket. How much is that ticket? Well, I can't tell you um, how much it is now. I can tell you that the standard price for it is $180, but it's been. So it's probably up more now. Mm -hmm. Got yeah. you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, um, well, you know that the price for the, for the child is straight. So once the 309 and the, once the 309 with you guys are paid, I still have to pay, of course, the 35th district court for the impedant traffic ticket. Yeah, right. And then you have to pay, um, you have to pay uh, clearance fees, SOS clearance fees, and they're $45 in each ticket for each ticket as well. So it's only $45 for the Ypsilanti with the 309? And then it's $45 for the 35th district? Well, you're gonna to have to pay the 309 plus 45 dollars, and then you that's what pay, I'm. Yeah, and then you have to pay whatever that amount is, whatever it is now, plus the 45 dollars. That's pretty good. Understand. All right, Mr. Barnett. <laughs> you know, if uh, if she's working to get her license uh, valid, I don't have an objection to adjourning again um, to give her some time to get that cleared up, and then. Uh, would be able to offer her something that's appropriate given those circumstances. You're going to keep working on this, Ms. Shumwell? Yes, I actually am going to try to pay. Um, somebody from the prosecution office called me on Monday, and they were um, telling me that I could make a payment arrangement on this ticket for the 309. And they were asking me how much I was able to pay a month. And so I told them $100 and they said, that's fine. They said they will let the courts know. Mm, not, not from our office. That's, that's yeah, sounds... actually, so, yeah, somebody from the prosecution office called me Monday they, morning. But this is probably the public defender's office. I was going to say that sounds more like a conversation our office would have with you, but it, but it wasn't me. So I'm sorry, I wasn't aware of that. Well, yeah, I, I that, forgot the young man's name, but he sent me an email because he I told him that um, I didn't know I had court today. So he actually I gave him my email address and he emailed me the oh, Zoom. Geez. Yes, it was probably Mr. Noble. It's probably my efficient assistant who is obviously doing what he's supposed to do. But I and I for some reason, I wasn't aware of that. So, Your Honor, um, the the other case, the expired license, that is a, a misdemeanor, is that, I believe, or is that a civil infraction? The expired license is a misdemeanor. Yeah. Well, for some reason, we're appointed on the civil infraction, not the misdemeanor. I, I don't know if, if we could have an adjournment, and I will personally follow up with Ms. Shemwell, and then we can try to resolve these with Mr. Barnett. Right. I'm appointing you on the misdemeanor as well. Thank you. And um, yes, you can follow up with her. It appears that she's going to work on trying to get her license back and then that'll yeah. be resolved. <laughs> okay, so um, right. I will 
plan to adjourn it. How long do you think you need, Ms. Shemwell, to work on your license now? Um, I need at least about 30 days, I would say. I'll give you 45 just to make sure it's all done. Okay. okay. September 1st. At 9 a.m. Bond is continued. I'm writing down what, what we're supposed to be doing so I don't have to look it up again. <laughs> you too. We need to pay 35th and 14B ticket. $309. Child restraint. Okay, Ms. Shimwell? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so right. much. Thank you. Have a good day. I hope you feel better. Thanks. Appreciate it. Lane Township versus Terrence Weatherspoon, ticket number 20W001860. Uh, Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Andrew Bannis with and on behalf of Mr. Weatherspoon. Hello, Mr. Weatherspoon. How's it going? I'm okay. How are you, sir? I'm all right. Right to today's day and time schedule for a um, trial in this matter. Yes, Your Honor. So this was, as you know, we had a, another public defender in this court recently. And so this was not my case. I, I might need to follow up with Mr. Barnett, although this has been going on for a few months here. Um, I actually don't have a police report. I have notes in the file that maybe one does not exist. Um, and I'm sorry, that's something I should have discussed with Mr. Barnett before court today. Um, so unless unless he unless that sounds familiar to him at all um i just asked for for one final adjournment so i can figure this out you are right yeah i don't have a report either um so I, I don't object to adjourning one last time to see if we can't come up with that and then mr bannis and i can talk about uh proposed resolution as well Adjourn it again. Well, Mr. Weatherspoon, I'm I'm the 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 newer public defender in this court, and uh, I just tried to reach you once a couple days ago, left a voicemail, but wasn't able to connect with you. So that's not your fault. Um, and I just don't have the information I need to advise you correctly. So I'm asking for one more adjournment. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I, the last public defender, though, he was like, he couldn't find a police report either. He had contacted them for a police report. He couldn't get it. So he was going to ask for it to be dismissed. So that's where I thought this was going right now. Well, I mean, they that's something I'll need to talk with the prosecutor. I mean, just they they could still they still have the right to try to pursue the charge, even without a police report, if they if they have a uh, an officer. But that's something, um, so I, I understand what you're saying and that this is the re a repeat of what you were already told. But um, until I can really try to work this out with the prosecutor, um, I, I'm certain I can't get it dismissed today, but I, I hear what you're saying. Okay. All right. Mr. Barnett, in terms of the police report in this case, have, can you advise the court of where we are with that? Have you attempted to get it? I did send out uh, to try to get a copy and I don't have a response. Um, I'm at a slight disadvantage because I don't have JIS so, and it's written as a ticket. So unless it's listed in the information I have, I don't even have a police report number. I just have an offense date and a, <clears throat> um, an officer. 
uh, is if is there a police incident report listed on the ticket, Your Honor? Let me see here. Yes, twenty zero zero two four three nine five. That may be very helpful. So, because um, usually they can pull it re referencing that number. Okay. All right, I'll adjourn it one more time. Mr. Weatherspoon, to see if they have that report. Mr. Bannis, um, if they don't have that report, um, your client is indicating he wants you to make a motion. You need to file that motion in writing. So you need to factor in seven days to have that filed at least and then have some response from the file. <coughs> I, I understand, Your Honor. Thank you. And if you need to, well, the, the two of you should talk, <laughs> as you indicated, and try to see where we are with this. Um, Mr. Barnett, how long do you need? Um, with this new information, I mean, a, a week or two should be fine. If, if Mr. Bannis wants to file a motion, maybe we uh, <clears throat> spit it out a few weeks to give him time. Okay. August 11th, 2021 at 9 a.m. I'm adjourning it out an additional week in the event that we need to file any motions. Okay. Thank you. Are you available that date, Mr. Weatherspoon? Yes. Great. Thank you, sir. I'll see you back here then, okay? We're all set, Mr. Weatherspoon. Do you need help getting out? All right. Um, Ypsilanti Township versus Ebony Harris, case number 13T00793. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Andrew Bannis on behalf of Ebony Harris. Your Honor, this is, I believe, a, um, from what I could see, Ms. Harris was discharged without improvement from probation, but there's still um, $4,000 of restitution and, and the total balance in my notes is 5,430. But um, we have, Mr. Noble and I have reached out to her several times over the past few days. Um, no, I apologize. No, my, actually, we have not been able to, we do not have any good contact information for her, although we have searched for it. And that's why we haven't been, I haven't been able to reach out to her. Thank you. Um, I, we did send notice to the last known address that we have. We will schedule this for an order to show cause and support on the failure to appear and failure to pay. Um, August 11, 2021 at 9 a.m. Ypsilanti Township versus Keani Thomas, case number 21T00357. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Andrew Bannis on behalf of Keani Thomas. Today's day of time scheduled for a pretrial in this matter. In our like, like the last case, for some reason, we don't have good contact information for the client and have therefore not been able to um, connect. Okay. Mr. Barnett, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow up with you. I need to double check if we have the police report. It looks like it was requested, but um fairly recently yeah we i have a note that says we sent it i think the same date as that other file so i'll just if you don't i'll i'll send it along um and just judge for your information i have had contact with the victim in this case um who and i'm prepared to ask to amend the bond conditions to allow for consensual contact and to allow him to go to the family residence i believe the victim is the mother of mr thomas so um I'm kind of surprised he's not present. We did send um, notice in the Zoom link to the 
Gmail address that we have on file. So I don't know whether you have that, Mr. Bannis, or not. We can go offline and I can provide you with that if you would like. That would be great, Your Honor. 